So why don't we look at, uh, we're in Galatians, we're in the second part of Galatians chapter 3, but we're not going to start with that. We're going to take a look at 1 Timothy chapter 1. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 5 through 10. Now the purpose of the commandment, now nobody uses King James, right? Is any King James people in here? I don't know. I'm new King James. Yeah, okay, that, that works, that's okay. Purpose, I stop you because uh, in King James says, now the end of the law. <laughs> we laugh at that. The purpose... Hmm? 1 Timothy 1, verse 5 through 10. Uh, now the purpose of the, of the commandment is love from a pure heart, from a good conscience, and from sincere faith, from which some, having strayed, have turned aside to idle talk, desiring to be teachers of the law, understanding neither what they say nor the things which they affirm. But we know that the law is good if one uses it lawfully, knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous person, but for the lawless and insubordinate, for the ungodly and for sinners, for the unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers, for fornicators, for sodomites, for kidnapp kidnappers and liars, for perjurers, and if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine, according to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust. Oh, okay, 5 through 11 then. <laughs> well, uh, you know, a lot of times yes. people, people will come to this and they'll say, well, see, uh, well, see, this doesn't apply to me because I'm made righteous in Christ. And they'll go down this list and they'll say, they'll say, well, see, I haven't murdered, murdered my mom or my dad and I'm not a fornicator and I'm not a sodomite and I'm not a kidnapper uh, and all these things on this list. They say, I'm not any of those things. And actually, the definitions were most of them. But, uh, but then he say, well, why don't you look at the last line in that? If there is anything that is contrary to sound doctrine, the law establishes what is sound doctrine, All right? So, by the way, the uh, the, the the idea they say, well, I, it doesn't apply to me because I'm right, made righteous in Christ. That works if you're reading First Corinthians one thirty or um, or uh, uh, Philippians one or Philippians three. Uh, but if you look, if you for me, it's a page turn. If you look at uh, at First Timothy one verse fifteen. Uh, this is not where Paul is made Christ, righteous in Christ. This is where Paul is a chief of all sinners. So in context, he's saying, the law is for me. The law applies to me. Okay? So hang on to that, this idea that what the law is, what the law is for, and then flip back to Galatians. Flip toward Galatians. It's a forward flip. Sorry about that. Galatians chapter 3, we're going to be going through verses 15 through uh, 29, kind of. We're actually going to kind of ignore 26 through 29, because uh, that's basically just a summary of, of what you, what's already said. So Galatians chapter 3, verse 15 through 18. Paul says, Brethren, I speak in a manner of men. Now that's a really important statement. It's kind of it's it, yeah you, you can't read you can't read the book of Galatians. It seems like a lot of folks when they read the book of Galatians they they have this short term memory problem, and they forget what's already been said, and what who he's talking to and what he's talking about. They're talking about a perversion of the gospel. They're talking about a manipulation of the scriptures that that makes uh, that establishes yeah. Right, he's talking to Gentiles. But he's talking about a manipulation of the gospel that allows some people to have right of inheritance and other people not to have a right of inheritance. Galatians chapter 3, verse 15 through 18. Dorothy has it. Dorothy has yours. Brethren, I speak in a manner of men, though it is... Only a man's covenant, yet if it is confirmed, no one annuls or adds to it. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He does not say, and to seeds, as to many, but as of one, and to your seed, who is Christ. And this I say, that the law, which was 430 years later, cannot annul the covenant, 
and that was confirmed before God in Christ, that it should be made the pro- that it should make the promise of no effect. For if the inheritance is of the law, it is no longer of promise, but God gave it to Abraham by promise. So who is the seed? That's pretty easy, right? That's Messiah. And he's very clear about that. And he's establishing the relationship with God is not based upon the law. It's based on the person of the Messiah. That's not, that's not anything new to us. That's not any, that that that's kind of new to the idea that's combating this salvation by works thing that the Gentiles are dealing with. Galatians, the Galatians are dealing with here. So he's he's speaking against that, and you know the clear evidence of that we have uh, Genesis chapter three verse fifteen. You can take it all the way back there. That's when and uh, when God says, "I will put enmity between you, the serpent, and the woman, and between your seed and her seed." It this one shall bruise your head, the serpent's head, and you shall bruise his heel, the one seed. Same guy, right? That's Messiah. See, we get this idea that this whole salvation by grace is, was plan B, that, uh, that God said, okay, we've well, got this people here, we want to we wanna tell them how to live, and so give them the law, and then they, they give them the law, and they mess that all up, so okay, we've got to figure something else out. So we'll grab the Messiah, and, and will and he'll come and, and, and die and everything will be okay. That's kind of the, the the idea that we have with this, but that's not it. I mean, Revelation thirteen eight says that that, that that Messiah was the the Lamb slain from before the foundation of the world, right? So he's Plan A. It's always been salvation by grace through faith, always, always. So here's the trick question. That. Uh, that kind of messes us up a little bit. Uh, what came first? When did when was the law established? When did the law come? Yeah, when did we get the law? Did it start with Moses? Okay, so what about before that? <laughs> Okay. This is what Paul, the way Paul explains it. Okay. Paul says, where there is no transgression, there's no law. Or where there's no law, there's no transgression. Right? That's in Romans 4.15. Where there is no transgression. Or where there is no law, when you don't have a law, you can't have a transgression. Okay. So, why did God get so ticked off at at Cain when he killed his brother Abel. There's no law. There's no law. There's no transgression. He can't do anything wrong. What about the Tower of Babel? What about all that? You know, what about Noah? The law was added because of the offense. That's actually... Okay. Sorry, this is what's going on. In... uh, (laughs) From... Adam until Abraham. There's a, there's a phrase, if you trace the genealogy along, there's a, there's a phrase that says, and this person walked well, had, with God. They had the understanding of the difference between what's right and wrong, what's good and evil. Okay? Because they had someone there throughout this history that's walking with God until Abraham. And then Abraham, in Genesis 18, 19, God says this really important thing about Abraham. He says, I know this man Abraham, for he will teach his children after him my commandments, what's right and wrong. So when you look into Jewish tradition, when the Jewish people went into Egypt, they were a righteous group of people. And then in the Jewish tradition is, is that when they got to Egypt and everything was hunky-dory and life was fine, then they stopped teaching their children God's commands. So then you have um, 240 years or so there's, uh, of, uh, yeah, I think 240 years of, of generations not teaching the commandments to their children. And so... 
the reason why in, in in Jewish tradition, the reason why the Egyptian pharaoh was allowed to place the Israeli Israeli people under bondage is because they neglected God's commandments. They stopped circumcising their children. They stopped teaching them all the things of, of that would be that would be in Torah. They had it until that, and then and then they when they went to Egypt, they neglected it. So when they come out of Egypt, it has to be written down for them. It has to be given to them again as something new, and they have to accept it. And that's and that's a that's a teaching that Paul would have grown up with. That's a teaching that we he would have understood. And so when he says that the law wasn't given for 430 years after, he wasn't saying that God didn't have a standard of righteousness for his people until Mount Sinai. The, the, God's definition of sin and God's definition of righteousness never changed. It's always been there. It's always been the same. 